I, it seems odd for Scheherazade to only go on for seven minutes. Um, and I should also say that uh, I refuse to follow Lynn and the other readers. I'm buoyed up by them instead. Um, and one more thing. Um, I got a drink with Brenda before um, this event, and we walked here, and we were multiply thwarted in our attempts <laughs> to walk here. First by the construction at Oxford, where we found ourselves on the wrong side of the fence, and we're like staring down into the belly of incipient parking structures and soldering iron sparking and so on and so forth. And then again, when we were walking through campus, and Lower Sproul was blocked off, which I didn't know because I'm on sabbatical and have like studiously avoided um, the university. And so I felt like we were in this age of prosperity whose only sign is parking structures. Um, and then suddenly we were here in a different world with a different smell. And I just would ask you to stay here. Um, so I'm going to read a poem about paradise. Um, at the height of Occupy, somebody asked me to go to New Mexico and give a talk on paradise and poetry. I couldn't go, and I sent this poem in my stead. It's called Entheogen, which is a drug that permits you to see the divine. And it's addressed to the poet Ariana Reigns. Ariana, there's the utopia of misrecognition, and the one of recognizing that. Paradise is neither of these if neither were more nearly a positive term. Joanna says paradise is not a domain, but the plan for imagining a future of returns. The closest I've come was in New Mexico, when a horned toad I surprised forced blood from its eye into my face as I stood on the edge of Demaria's lightning field. That part of the country has always seemed to me something other than potential real estate. There are so few signs of a human present or its past, enough absences that it's the neither of nature and culture, dust hanging in the air. I should admit I was sent there alone by plane several times as a child in the 70s to visit my uncle, then curator of the Navajo Museum in Santa Fe, and I've always loved uncles that mix of brother and father, also a flight out of the immediate family, C.F. Eve Kosofsky Sedgwick, that doesn't require leaving it. So they may be the neither of family, because nearly full of its terms. And my uncle Stephen, therefore, might have enchanted the red clay further out of its genocidal calm, already posing as deep previousness and an underdevelopment falling with the rain visible 50 miles away, uneventfulness, like being constantly blasted by no harm. But really recognizing that mistake does not dissolve the effect or desire to return there, which I never do. Because of how America is, though America isn't the name for the problem, you said you wanted a talk on paradise and poetry to be given at your thing in Santa Fe. Paradise is unbounded enclosures, as little present in any stretch of poetry as New Mexico is in the States. It flickers in and out of the majuscule until, quote, the hand holds no chalk to draw its location. As the poet wrote in his self-portrait from the city of my birth, though he saw it in Vienna in 59 with Pierre Martyry for once really himself, though getting ready to depart, or neither himself nor not. Joanna considered using John Ashbery on Paradise as an epigraph to her book, but balked finally at the anachronism. Though the anachronistic may be a sign Paradise is near, putting good pressure on the immediate, like an uncle outside Taos. I still haven't sent you her book, which is about a practical program for restoring Eden in the 17th century as the collective subject of science or literature, any truth-producing group. This is apt now as well, not just because of Occupy, but because now is in time, even if it seems not to be in New Mexico when staring at the dwellings of first inhabitants. 
I worry you won't read Joanna's work until neither is a verb. And nothing I'm saying is new, though I haven't said it before, nor addressed you, who are in love with the dust of the second person. And I haven't captured the New Mexico that attracted D.H. Lawrence and Andre Breton, coming closest, maybe, when evoking Los Alamos in the past tense via blasted above. This land was always post-nuclear, out of time, while in it. You've written about truth and consequences, New Mexico, so you know and have your own version, your inspired tactical reasons for picking New Mexico as a place to think in, a place to invite those with whom you want to imagine restoring the world as functional subject of interdisciplinary whatever you decide you want together, however briefly. But it isn't truth and consequences, it's truth or consequences. I truly made that mistake, then really recognized it. Replacing or with and marks the kind of parapraxis paradise causes where it can't appear. Sort of like how I nearly came to your thing, how I should have come, and you should have had it in Oakland. Mm -hmm. <laughs>